This video will demonstrate the suturing of an umbilical venous catheter. To begin, we will identify the two arteries and the one vein in the umbilical cord. Care should be made to avoid piercing or suturing the arterial vessels in the cord. For the purpose of this suturing video, we will suture the umbilical line at the 12 centimeter marking, which is right here at the opening to the umbilical vein. We will be leaving the needle on the suture until the end of the procedure. So be careful when doing this suturing process that you're aware that there's a sharp on your sterile field until the end of the suturing process. So we will begin by taking one bite out of the umbilical cord. And we want it to be a good size bite and we want it to be away from the arteries. So I'm going to begin by taking one bite, good size bite, out of the umbilical cord. And we're going to secure that with two flat, simple instrument knots. Okay. Leaving a bit of a tail. So there's our first instrument knot and our second instrument knot. Okay, so that kind of creates the first part of our base. Next, we're going to perform four hem or slip stitches individually around the umbilical line. So we're going around and through. There's our first slip stitch. Again, around and through for our second slip stitch. Around and through. For the fourth, slip stitch. Now we want to repeat what we did when we first started. So we want to take another bite out of the umbilical cord, again avoiding the arteries, and best to be 12 cock hours away from where your first bite is. Again this is to really create the best anchor that you can to the umbilical cord for stabilization. So you're coming through, avoiding the arteries and the vein. And we're going to do exactly what we started with, which are two simple flat instrument knots. Okay, so there's one. And two. Now we want to test the security of the suturing. So you want to give it a really good tug, good, good tug, a good pull to make sure that that catheter is nicely staying in place. Next, we want to draw back to ensure that there is blood return. And that's something you want to definitely do before you get out of your field because as we know, there can certainly be times when we suture so tightly that we're not able to actually withdraw blood. So you want to, and there we have a blood return. So we know in fact that our sutures are not too tight. If for some reason the catheter had to be pulled back, so if someone was instructed to pull the catheter back, say a centimeter, the best way to do that is to first take your, your first hand and tightly secure around the base where the sutures are. So they're all nicely there and almost pinch the catheter. And then you use your opposite hand to pull the catheter back to the desired, say one centimeter. And this kind of serves as a safety mechanism. So for some reason that catheter tends to pull a little more abruptly than you thought, you have these fingers at the base to grab hold of. 
We want to communicate to the nurse the exact location of the suture marking. So for this particular baby, we would let the nurse know our umbilical cord is sutured at the 12 centimeter marking. Important for them to make sure that that is documented. Also important if for any reason there's any manipulation of the catheter that that um, end destination is documented as well. Once you exit the sterile field, it's imperative that you remind the nurses to create the bridge taping or the gold post taping to add securement to the umbilical catheter. And as a final reminder, infants who have umbilical catheters in place should be positioned supine so there's direct visibility of the umbilicus and therefore no snugglies, blankets, or diapers should be used in any way to be covering the umbilicus. And that concludes our video.